Hey everyone, Joe here. There's been a new update to Audacity, Audacity 3.0.0, and I thought it'd be good to just get a quick video out on what the changes are that, that's been made to the software, because there are a lot of changes, um, and whether it's worth updating and, and upgrading. When you get these new versions of your DAW or any software, the list of changes can be quite confusing to read down and, and just long. So I just wanted to go through each one um, show you the software, show you the changes for, for whether you're a beginner and you haven't downloaded Audacity yet or you're thinking of updating to the new version uh, and just go over sort of what they are, what they do um, and whether they're you know useful or anything. So quick review, quick overview of Audacity 3.0.0. If you are new to Audacity, I've put together a 21 video free course uh, right here on YouTube, Audacity Accelerator. It will take you from knowing practically nothing about Audacity to being able to record, edit, mix and everything on Audacity. So I'll leave a link in the description below for that. But yeah, Audacity 3.0.0. So I've installed it already. Um, if you're familiar with Audacity, you'll notice that pretty much nothing has changed visually. Um, if anything at all, but there are quite a lot of changes under the hood. I'm just going to take a look at the at the change uh, the change list, the the new features, and see what there is. So, firstly, and this is definitely the biggest change, there's a new format that you'll be saving your Audacity files into. Um, before it was .aup, that was the the project file when you go to save project. Now it's .aup3. Now the difference between between these two formats is that now all of your audio recordings are saved in that one project file itself rather than as separate pieces of audio in a, in a separate audio folder. Uh, it makes this is actually really good, it's useful because it makes things a lot tidier and it stops your projects from breaking. Um, if you end up moving the audio to a different location from the project file, so. So yeah, if I hit record and just record some audio and then go to save, save project, uh, project test. Now if I have a look on the desktop, let me just close Audacity, it's just that one file and, and the, the recording is included in that. You can see the, the file size is 2 meg, so it's obviously quite a big file size um, because it's got that audio audio in in the project and then you just open that up and and it's all there it's actually really useful um, it's quite unusual especially if you're used to other DAWs because normally they will record record when you record audio they will save the audio files in a different folder but I think it'd be useful especially for beginners um, who might have had trouble before with getting projects together uh, when using Audacity when saving. And then next we've got project size which basically is saying that the new file structure shouldn't change the, the overall size of your files um, which is good. Performance improvements, automatic recovery improvements uh, following crashes which is nice um, just to let you choose whether to discard or, or recover projects. Okay backing up your project there's a new save option so when you go into save project now, you've got backup project as well. So we've already saved this as project test, and then we can just go save project, backup project, project test. Uh, let's just call it project test backup. And now you've got a backup version of it. Now the difference between this and just your normal save project as is that it keeps your session open. Uh, rather than closing it. So if, if I did save as, uh, save as, it's it's going to uh, close the previous project and open it up as the as the new version that I've just saved. So a useful addition. Nice to have that option. Uh, a couple of new languages uh, been added. That'll be useful to some, I'm sure. Um, and then we've got a new analyzer tool called Label Sounds. So when you go to Analyze, before you have this Silence Finder. Oh, select some audio first, then go to Analyze, and you've got Silence Finder, and it lets you place labels at areas of silence based on your 
db um, and duration settings but now they've added this uh, this label sounds so you've just got a, a lot more uh, accuracy with it and a lot more to play with there if that's something that you use. Got enhanced directory settings so you can add more folder locations um, as defaults for where you want your files to go. You can now import and export macros. So if you go into macros now you can export any macros that you've made um, and import them. So useful for if you're moving to a different machine. And then what else have we got? You can add comments to your macros now. The noise gate has been improved. So noise gate effect has been improved. It now supports faster attack times down to one millisecond and provides separate controls for attack, hold and decay. This is really good. This is what I want to see from, from Audacity updates. Updates to um, to some of these, these effects plugins because it is very limited. I have mentioned that on my course, on, on the Audacity Accelerator course. There is a uh, limit to what you can do with some of these plugins. They are useful for doing basic basic things, but yeah, just just being able to to make uh, to make much faster attack on your your noise gates. Uh, that's a useful addition. Multi view can be set as user default view if you use multi view. Um, preferences settings that affect behavior. Uh, they've just added a page to the manual to explain explain this. Uh, mixer board improvement. So this is useful as well if, if mixer board is something you use. I don't tend to use the mixer board. Um, I use a mixer when I'm using Pro Tools and things like that, but on Audacity it has a little mixer as well. When you've got a lot of tracks going on, it's, it's quite nice to have that there um, and be able to make changes as a whole. But the difference is with, with version 3.0.0 is that the mixer board will stay on top whatever you're doing so you can you know you can you can edit and things and your mixer board is going to stay visible which is quite nice if that's something you use and then other than that it's pretty much just bug fixes Nyquist has been upgraded which is the format for the uh, for the effects plugins that are on Audacity and then just a bunch of bug fixes which is always nice especially with audio software which has a tendency to crash and things so yeah happy with that so overall, yep, it's definitely worth updating to Audacity 3.0.0 when you can. Um, it's obviously a free update, like like everything with Audacity. And yeah, for those of you who use Audacity or, or are learning to use Audacity, even just for the bug fixes alone, it's worth updating. But yeah, those extra features should hopefully come in handy to some. I would like to see more of these effects plugins in the future being updated, to be honest. Um, yeah, just the EQs and things are very basic, the compressor really like to see some more features added to those but hopefully in the future we'll see more of that but yep that's it just a quick video detailing the new updates to audacity again if you're learning audacity i really recommend checking out that free course 21 videos takes you through setting up uh, recording editing mixing everything you need to know to get started with audacity the link is in the description below and i'll be putting out more videos on audacity in the future relating to the updates um, other features and, and tutorials and things like that so hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of that and as always thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.